In the U.S. Air Force, formations are used to provide mutual support for accomplishing the mission. Whether you're doing air superiority, air interdiction, or trying to find your way through some clouds, you'll be in some kind of formation. In this video, we'll go over how the USAF does basic formations. Formation training starts with two ship formations because procedures used in formation typically remain the same whether in two ship or larger formations. Within that two ship element, each member has certain responsibilities. Lead is ultimately responsible for the safe and effective conduct of the mission, which means that lead will make the decision on when the formation turns and what formation they will be in. The wingman has the responsibility of deconfliction. As a wingman, it is your job to maneuver to be in the correct position on lead. Another way to look at this relationship between lead and wingman is as a contract. The contract is that number one will fly a smooth aircraft and number two will adjust to maintain proper position. The first formation we'll cover is fingertip. It's called fingertip because in a four-ship formation, it resembles the position of the fingertips on the right hand. Fingertip is used for weather penetration, airfield arrivals and departures, and show formations. You enter this formation by getting into a position where you're looking down the leading edge of lead's wing while being a beam of the front tip of the stabilizer. This is referred to as being a beam the slap bolt. If you took off in formation as shown in the last video, you're pretty much already in position and all you need to do is make some minor adjustments to get into fingertip formation. When you're in fingertip formation, turns do not need to be announced on the radio. Wingmen will just maintain fingertip references throughout the turn. The standard fingertip setup puts the number two position on the left side of lead with three and four on the right, but the sides can be flipped at lead's discretion. Echelon uses the same references as fingertip with the caveat that all wingmen are on the same side of the formation. This formation is typically used for an overhead break where each aircraft peels off one at a time. Echelon allows the flight to do this without any aircraft flying across the path of another member of the flight. We'll cover overhead breaks in more detail in another video. In echelon turns, number two remains in the same POM or plane of motion as lead. What this means is that we won't maintain fingertip references in a turn the way we did before. From number two's point of view, lead will stay on the horizon. Throughout the turn, we will want to keep the lower intake on the horizon line. In other aircraft, you can just keep the center line of the fuselage on the horizon. This is called an echelon turn, and it's how we will be turning for the rest of the formations we cover in this video. Fingertip and echelon are tight formations with minimal room for error, so it takes a lot of concentration from wingmen to maintain. When the formation needs more visual lookout, room to maneuver, and freedom to complete other tasks, then the Air Force uses root formation. Root formation is flown with a minimum of two aircraft wingspans, out to a maximum of 500 feet. Wingmen should be no farther forward than line abreast and no farther aft than the fingertip line. As lead, you can direct your wingman in a root formation by fishtailing the aircraft. The signal to go back to fingertip from root is a shallow wing rock like this. The last formation we'll cover in this video is close trail. In this formation, lead can maneuver without having to signal turns. Lead initiates close trail with the radio call of go close trail from any of the other formations we've covered. Two will then maneuver to a spot that's one to two aircraft lengths behind lead and just below lead's jet wash. You can tell you're in the correct vertical position when you see space between lead's stabilator and the trailing edge of lead's wing. If that space disappears, then you're too high. Since lead can't see two when in close trail, two will have to let lead know with an in radio call when in the correct position. Once in close trail, lead can maneuver freely within certain limits. Maintain a minimum of 1G at all times, but no more than 4G. Be smooth and predictable. No over-the-top maneuvering. Reforming from close trail can be directed with either a shallow wing rock or a radio call. Close trail is not typically used on real-world missions. It's a training tool that builds experience useful for the extended trail exercise, which we will cover in a future video. While maneuvering in close formation, you'll find that most of your attention will be on maintaining formation. There won't be a lot of room for doing other things like keeping a visual lookout. But there are other formations that will make things easier for you as a wingman. We'll go over those in the next video on tactical formations. I hope you found this video useful. 
and thanks for watching.